Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the CEO Peak. And today I have a great honor to host uh, here in Payjoy, Doug Rickett. Doug, hi, welcome to the show. Hi Dave, glad to be with you. Doug is the CEO of Payjoy and he had an incredible career in Africa, in Asia, once he found a problem that he really wanted to solve. Yeah, thank you Dave. Uh, I actually first came to see the power of finance in enabling access to technology in the area of solar. Uh, so I had worked in Africa initially as a teacher in the Peace Corps for two years and the family I was in touch with uh, at one point had a tragedy where one of the children uh, unfortunately lost a leg in a farming accident. And part of the tragedy was there was no way for them to call the hospital with no mobile phone. And so a few years later when I was working on uh, solar energy in Africa, uh, it was really meaningful to me to see that family get access to a mobile phone and electricity and light. Uh, and now they can call the, co the hospital. Now when they go home at night, they have electricity in their house. And a big part of how we were able to do that was by finance. So we built a, a financing technology into a solar system uh -huh. so that people could pay on a weekly or monthly basis uh, and then their solar system would turn on for a week or a month. So that was pay as you go solar and it's now a thriving industry. Uh, and we, I saw that turn into hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, solar getting out to millions and millions of people in Africa uh, and other emerging markets. So that was my inspiration for Payjoy, is using technology to enable finance. And the area I came to with Payjoy is mobile phones. Uh, so we're enabling now people in emerging markets to qualify to buy their first great smartphone and pay for it over time. Finance in India at that time seems like it was available only to a small minority of the population. So if you're extremely well qualified, you have a high paying yeah. corporate job, yeah, you can finance an iPhone over 24 months. But the majority of the population, their only option is to buy just in cash. And yeah. in many cases, even a $200 smartphone in cash is uh, very difficult to afford. So I think India is one of the biggest markets for us. And I'm excited that we're planning to launch in India in the next year. Uh, in the meantime, in the last two years since we were founded, we launched in the US, focusing on a lot of immigrants coming to the US without credit, as well as underbanked Americans who don't have a big credit history. Uh, and getting them access to smartphones. And then we also expanded last year to Mexico. Uh, so we now have uh, many thousands of customers in Mexico who are getting their first great smartphone. I've been super fortunate to work with a great uh, group of people who got excited about the mission and said they want to devote their time on this. And you know, many of them have uh, great experience and plenty of other things they could work on. Um, but I think it's been really complimentary. So my two co-founders, uh, Mark and Gib, uh, Mark comes from a business development background at Google and Facebook. And so now, as we're working internationally, he has the experience sitting across the table from these multi-billion dollar companies and negotiating the deal. It's going to be a win-win. And my co-founder, Gib, is just a fantastic operational manager and uh, has, has led most of the, the team uh, with dozens of reports and the implementation necessary to really execute. So anything else you wanted to share with the audience today, with the other CEOs that you learned uh, along the way? Uh, I think it's been really valuable. Uh, I mean, what you're doing, building information sharing between CEOs. Uh, our Series A investor, Union Square Ventures, has a great network of other companies. And so, for example, in San Francisco, we have a, a FinTech CEO's breakfast uh, that meets every quarter. And so for me, I found it really useful as the, uh, you know, last year, the CEO of the 30-person company sitting down for breakfast with the CEO of the 100-person company and the 300-person company, uh, and just that networking. And I found within the industry, we had similar problems, uh, but it's great for me to see what people have experienced a year or two ahead, and then sometimes give back. Like, we were incubated in the Stanford Startex Accelerator. And also for me there, one of the most valuable things was they had industry uh, bi-weekly meetings every other week uh, within mm -hmm. a group. So we would talk about the same challenges we were facing. So a little bit of focus, but then that, that really peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sharing. Uh, you know, I remember when I was in high school, I read uh, Seven Principles of Highly Effective Leadership uh, by uh, Steve Comey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that struck me back then. I mean, I was just a high school student, you know, working as a president of a high school club, essentially. But uh, that type of thing um, is something I really aspire to uh, in having a mission-driven organization and trying to find people who are excited about the mission. 
Uh, and I think really the, the team is absolutely the most important thing. Finding other people who work well together and are committed toward pursuing the same mission. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Doug, for your time today and uh, sharing with us uh, your journey so far uh, towards a purpose-driven organization. And thank you for watching uh, today the CEO Peak, and I look forward to see you next time.